Hello friends, welcome to Scientific Investing Week and Time and Time for a new video. So I had told that I'll speak about the golden indicator and uh, this is one indicator which I use quite often in analyzing the companies uh, and analyzing the market. And a few weeks back, I made a tweet where, you know, uh, I kind of went bullish and I told uh, now this is the time to, you know, start your SIPs and, uh, you know, this is the time to, you know, start looking at investing aggressively. Uh, again, I'm not a registered investment advisor. This is not a, you know, investment advice, but this is what I follow. And I will walk you through why I made that statement. And also, if you would have tracked me on Twitter enough, you'll know I went uh, super bearish on October, multiple tweets highlighting uh, you know, the overvaluation of the market. So uh, it's very difficult to go stock by stock, understand if the market is super overvalued or undervalued. Also, I believe there's a misnomer in the market. People always say that, you know, always stay 100% invest in the market, never sell and all of that. I totally disagree with it because I feel if the market is at such a juncture that one can lose 50% of their capital, uh, from that point of time, why to stay invested 100%? And uh, when the market is so attractive, then, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, everything looks like, uh, you know, there is a very good risk reward ratio. Why not to invest more than the normal SIPs? So I believe when there are extremes in the market, uh, we should go in cash partially, or we should invest more than our normal capacity. And when market is in fair zone, that is the time when SIPs can continue. So the big question is how and when to do that. And this whole analysis will be effort in that direction. So I will summarize everything in this one single chart. And though it's a one single chart, let me tell you, it, it takes a lot of effort to build this. And, uh, you know, it took me almost two to three years of time to, you know, build a system where a lot of these uh, charts could be generated. And if you look at this chart, uh, you have a X axis, uh, which is your time axis and you have a Y axis, which is a percentage value. And then you have numbers ranging between zero to one. Now your question is, what is this number? This number is a percentage of companies which are above their 200 day exponential moving average. And I would have talked about this metric partially in one of those prior previous videos. But if you remember, when you would have looked at duration of those charts, those durations would have started from 2015 and not before, because that is what charting is capable of doing on a weekly interval. But here, if you see this is almost 22 years of data, 20 years of data I'm presenting with you in 20 years of data market has gone through multiple up and down cycles, at least two, three up and down cycles, which means we have all the information. Also, if you see, uh, I can filter this data on different caps. I can filter on all cap, mid cap, nifty 50, next 50, small cap, ultra small cap. So now you can understand and going back in 2005, 2006 and finding which are the companies with small cap, which are the companies ultra small cap and all. So a lot of effort has been put. There's a lot of backend effort which goes on a lot of, you know, codification quants, a lot of coding and a lot of experiments in terms of identifying some of these key insights, which are actionable insights. Uh, now your question will be if uh, how to, uh, you know, read it. So see the way we track is, so this is for right now, this is for small cap index. And why I'm highlighting is because I am a small cap, mid cap equity player. I try to pick stocks there, uh, but they're very volatile and very risky. If we don't time it to perfection, even if you will see the last 10, 15 years of CAGR of small cap index, that has not been very great. So we need to time it and how do we do it? So this is the small cap index uh, companies and this metric, this bar says what were the percentage of companies in a given period, which were above the 200 day moving average, exponential moving average. And uh, each bar is a 15 day period. So I run this every 15 days. So in a month, you will get two such bars and in a year you will get 24 such bars. So that is why every year you, when you will count the number of bars, you will see there are 24 bars. And then we see, so uh, the way to read it, let's say if we are here at the peak, it means in 2003, December, 99% of the companies went above their 200 day exponential moving average. That is how, uh, you know, we have to read this particular chart. Now, if you see in a high momentum market, when everything is going, doing well, uh, more and more companies will be above their 200 day moving average. And when they, whenever market will go through correction, less and less percentage of companies will be 
above their 200 day moving average so if you take a time of 2008 recession from the peak of almost 80% companies 83% companies above 200 day moving average you got almost you know 10 to 15% of companies and in fact literally no company for one or two months no company above 200 day moving average same thing happened in 2011 same thing happened in 2013 same thing happened in 2018-19 and there are two ways one when the bull market goes on from a lower end you'll see slowly more and more companies going above their 200 day moving average and then the momentum will continue for some time and then the momentum will slow still the index will be strong but slowly you will see the percentage of companies will go down and the index will give up and then we will find a situation where you know less and less companies are above their 200 day moving average again it goes under price and time correction again situation reverses there are two kinds of scenarios. If in an uptrend market, you might have a small corrections, like even if you see the 2003 to 8, 7 cycle, in that cycle also you got two instances where, you know, you got a decent 20, in fact, 20 to 30% correction. And that is why you saw almost from 80, 90% companies above 200 a moving average, this number came down to 20% and 10% kind of thing. The second kind of correction is a long bearish correction. So this is not a uptrend market correction. So these two were corrections in an uptrend market, whereas this was a pure downtrend market, seven, eight. Uh, 2018 19 was a pure downtrend market. This 11 12 was a pure downtrend market. So, in a downtrend market, you go under both price correction because more and more companies fall below their 200 day moving average. And you go through a time correction where it may stay like this for a long time. So, uh, right now, the question is where are we in the current cycle? Now, if you learn from history, whenever more than 60% of companies or 70, 80%, especially take this number, 80% of the companies are above their 200 day moving average. This becomes the time to become more and more, uh, you know, skeptic about market. And this is where, again, it's not about timing the market to 100% that picking the bottom and picking the top and going in 0% cash or 100% invested. This is the time when one should partially start offloading. And again, this is not if a single metric could have solved all the problem, then life was easy. So we need to mix it with technical analysis, mix it with a little bit of fundamental analysis, and that will even improve our accuracy further. But even without that, if you sell partially at these levels, which you could have done, you know, around 2003, around 2005, around 2007, around 2009, around 2014, around 2017, around 2020, Again, uh, every time it may not work. As I said, it's a unidirectional metric. Nothing is 100% perfect. But when you look at the mean returns of selling partially here, and buying partially below whenever this metric goes below 20% number. And if there's a, you know, time correction, then you buy it in staggered amount. So never buy everything in one go. If it goes up again, it's okay. You can buy and write the momentum, but if it stays here, you can, you know, keep doing your SIPs in a staggered amount or keep adding lump sum more and more time. It spends below like this, like it spent here, like spent here and wait for two, three years to play out and then, you know, ride the bull market and then a time will come and again, it will go up and then that will be the time to sell. So the question is where are we? And I'm showing you with almost 20 years of data. Now the question is where are we right now? And if you see uh, the reason why I went bearish uh, in October, why the count of tweets highlighting overvalued and all increased because you can clearly see if this was the peak which happened uh, which was almost the month of June. And then when you see the October period, you can clearly see the downtrend is visible. And then if somebody would have known technical analysis and all known valuations, you would have seen that, you know, my fundamental indicator, my technical indicator, my quants indicator, everything is indicating that there is froth in the market and it's not time to be 100% invested. Let's start, uh, you know, getting into cash. But why, uh, you know, last one week back, uh, you know, I made a statement that uh, it is time to go back to the SIPs. The reason is if you see for the first time now, this number has gone below 20%. Now this number is around, you know, 20%. I am not telling it will reverse from here. See, you have to learn from history. It might reverse like this. It might reverse like this. It might reverse like this. 
we are not in the game of prediction and i i just hate people who keep giving prediction values you know the target aayega wo target aayega wo target aayega that is not the way to do it stay away from people who do it day in day out nobody knows the future the idea is to be prepared and the idea is to be directionally right the thing is if again we are seeing a upward trend then we can start investing uh, and quickly we can go full invested but if this number keeps coming down this number stays below it then it's better to keep the sips on rather than doing a lump sum investment but if we see a significant amount of time let's say 3 months 4 months 5 months being spent here then that is the time to gradually increase our sips so again a single metric won't do the work we will have to do little bit of you know fundamental analysis little bit of technical analysis but still if we follow this kind of method we will be far better than you know first doing the reverse which most of the people do they come and invest heavily in these scenarios and then when market tanks they go the portfolio goes 30% in loss they get worried and they exit or even if one is doing sips throughout equal sip here equal sip here i think booking profits in this zone and increasing the sips in this zone this will work much 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 better and you know give a much better return even if you are a stock picker these are the times when picking the stock will lead to higher return i am not talking again about momentum investing i am talking about pure value investing these are the times when it will happen and it will generate a you know bigger alpha when it could not work when it may not work so again see this is only 20 years of data and uh, you know the us market is of you know 100 year plus history and we have those data available in india it's difficult to go and collect data you know before that period and if we see some kind of macro economic scenario which has not played out in last 22 years uh, maybe it played out in 1950s 60s 80s and if that kind of scenario is playing out again where there could be a 10 year kind of you know five year kind of correction where five year the market doesn't move still the market will move in pockets it will go up and down some stocks will move but i am just talking about the scenario uh the most bearish scenario which has never played out then everybody will be doomed and still i am telling still if we follow this approach we will do relatively better but those are the kind of times maybe this 20 20 years of data may not be able to capture so that is the only thing where we need to be a bit cautious but this is how i take my decision you know totally believing on the data totally believing on history totally believing on what has worked again and again and again so one last question you will have is how easy or how difficult it is to do and as i said i have not found this information easy so uh, what we are doing is we have a practitioner membership uh, you know running we are planning to include we have some 20 25 such metric we have a overall you know a data driven insight system we are building whether it's a small cap whether it's a micro cap whether it's a large cap uh, our aspiration is to go at sector level do lot of this analysis and provide those data cuts on a you know regular basis so that one can uh, himself take the decision understanding where the market is how attractive or you know uh, unattractive it is and uh, we will roll out as a part of you know membership programs you already have 70 you know subscribers onboarded but we will roll it out there and uh, that is how we will share continue sharing all these insights but you know i'll keep sharing as much as possible on you know the youtube channel so uh, keep a tab on this and uh, i have just added uh, the link for a form in the subscription box in case you are interesting in getting all these insights in a periodic manner through that membership just fill that form and i will get back to you so i hope this video was useful i hope now you know how to track it uh, you know how to you know uh, do something better than you know uh, just uh, doing sips every time without get thinking whether we are in a overvalued market or undervalued market and i hope this will help you to take better investing decisions and do better wealth creation thank you so our endeavor is to bring the best of the knowledge best of the insights and uh, if you like this video if you like our channel do like this video do let uh, us know your comments uh, in terms of something you liked about it you didn't like about it something more if you want us to do and if you have not subscribed subscribe to us and help us to you know spread our channel uh, to more and more audience so that you know we can make much better videos and you know more insightful videos thank you